Lysmitna, for Memores, the 7th of November 1878 to the 27th of October 1968, was an Austrian, later Swedish, physicist who worked on radioactivity and nuclear physics. Mietner was part of the team that discovered nuclear fission, an achievement for which her colleague Otto Hahn was awarded the Nobel Prize. Mietner is often mentioned as one of the most glaring examples of women's scientific achievement overlooked by the Nobel Committee. A 1997 Physics Today study concluded that Mietner's omission was a rare instance in which personal negative opinions apparently led to the exclusion of a deserving scientist from the Nobel. Element 109, Mietnerium, is named in her honor. Mietner was born into a Jewish family as the third of eight children in Vienna, 2nd District, Leopoldstadt. Her father, Philip Mietner, was one of the first Jewish lawyers in Austria. She was born on 7 November 1878. She shortened her name from Elise to Lice. The birth register of Vienna's Jewish community lists Mietner as being born on 17 November 1878, but all other documents listed as 7 November, which is what she used. As an adult, she converted to Christianity, following Lutheranism, and being baptized in 1908. Scientific career Inspired by her teacher, physicist Ludwig Boltzmann, Mietner studied physics and became the second woman to obtain a doctoral degree in physics at the University of Vienna in 1905, War Melitungum in Homogen and Kuppa. Women were not allowed to attend institutions of higher education in those days, but thanks to support from her parents, she was able to obtain private higher education, which she completed in 1901 with an extern maturer examination at the Akademisches Gymnasium. Following the doctoral degree, she rejected an offer to work in a gas lamp factory. Encouraged by her father, and backed by his financial support, she went to Berlin. Maximum Planck allowed her to attend his lectures, an unusual gesture by Planck, who until then had rejected any women wanting to attend his lectures. After one year, Mietner became Planck's assistant. During the first years she worked together with chemist Otto Hahn, and discovered with him several new isotopes. In 1909 she presented two papers on beta radiation. In 1912 the research group Han Mietner moved to the newly founded Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, Kui, in berlin Dahlem, southwest in Berlin. She worked without salary as a guest in Han's department of radio chemistry. It was not until 1913, at 35 years old and following an offer to go to Prague as associate professor, that she got a permanent position at Kui. In the first part of World War I, she served as a nurse handling X-ray equipment. She returned to Berlin in her research in 1916, but not without inner struggle. She felt in a way ashamed of wanting to continue her research efforts when thinking about the pain and suffering of the victims of war and their medical and emotional needs. Lice Mietner and Otto Hahn in their laboratory. In 1917, she and Hahn discovered the first long-lived isotope of the element productinium, for which she was awarded the Leibniz Medal by the Berlin Academy of Sciences. That year, Mietner was given her own physics section at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Chemistry. In 1922, she discovered the cause, known as the Auger effect, of the emission from surfaces of electrons with signature energies. The effect is named for Pierre Victor Auger, a French scientist who independently discovered the effect in 1923. In 1926, Mietner became the first woman in Germany to assume a post of full professor in physics at the University of Berlin. There she undertook the research program in nuclear physics which eventually led to her co-discovery of nuclear fission in 1939, after she had left Berlin. She was praised by Albert Einstein as the German Marie Curie. In 1930, Mietner taught a seminar on nuclear physics and chemistry with Leo Szilard. With the discovery of the neutron in the early 1930s, speculation arose in the scientific community that it might be possible to create element heavier than uranium, atomic number 92, in the laboratory. A scientific race began between Ernest Rutherford in Britain, Iron Joliet Curie in France, Enrico Fermi in Italy, and the Mietner Hand team in Berlin. At the time, all concerned believed that this was abstract research for the probable honor of a Nobel Prize. None suspected that this research would culminate in nuclear weapons. When Adolf Hitler came to power in 1933, Mietner was acting director of the Institute for Chemistry. Although she was protected by her Austrian citizenship, all other Jewish scientists, including her nephew Otto Frisch, 
Fritz Haber, Leo Szilard and many other eminent figures, were dismissed or forced to resign from their posts. Most of them emigrated from Germany. Her response was to say nothing, and bury herself in her work, she later acknowledged, in 1946, that it was not only stupid, but also very wrong, but I did not leave at once. After the Anschluss, her situation became desperate. In July 1938, Mietner, with help from the Dutch physicists Dirk Koster and Adrian Fokker, escaped to the Netherlands. She was forced to travel undercover to the Dutch border, where Costa persuaded German immigration officers that she had permission to travel to the Netherlands. She reached safety, though without her possessions. Mietner later said that she left Germany forever with 10 marks in her purse. Before she left, Otto Hahn had given her a diamond ring he had inherited from his mother, this was to be used to bribe the frontier guards if required. It was not required, and Mietner's nephew's wife later wore it. Mietner was lucky to escape, as Kurt Hess, a chemist who was an avid Nazi, had informed the authorities that she was about to flee. An appointment at the University of Groningen did not come through, and she went instead to Stockholm, where she took up a post at Mann Siegbund's laboratory, despite the difficulty caused by Siegbund's prejudice against women in science. Here she established a working relationship with Niels Bohr, who travelled regularly between Copenhagen and Stockholm. She continued to correspond with Han and other German scientists. Nuclear fission. Han and Mietner met privately in Copenhagen in November to plan a new round of experiments, and they subsequently exchanged a series of letters. Han and Fritz Strassmann then performed the difficult experiments which isolated the evidence for nuclear fission at his laboratory in Berlin. The surviving correspondence shows that Han recognized that fission was the only explanation for the barium, but, baffled by this remarkable conclusion, he wrote to Mietner. The possibility that uranium nuclei might break up under neutron bombardment had been suggested years before, notably by Ida Nodak in 1934. However, by employing the existing liquid drop model of the nucleus, Mietner and Frisch were the first to articulate a theory of how the nucleus of an atom could be split into smaller parts. Uranium nuclei had split to form barium and krypton, accompanied by the ejection of several neutrons and a large amount of energy, the latter two products accounting for the loss in mass. She and Frisch had discovered the reason that no stable element beyond uranium, in atomic number, existed naturally, the electrical repulsion of so many protons overcame the strong nuclear force. Meitner also first realized that Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc2, explained the source of the tremendous releases of energy in nuclear fission, by the conversion of rest mass into kinetic energy, popularly described as the conversion of mass into energy. Nuclear fission experimental setup, reconstructed at the Deutsches Museum, Munich. A letter from Bohr, commenting on the fact that the amount of energy released when he bombarded uranium atoms was far larger than had been predicted by calculations, based on a non-fissile core, had sparked the above inspiration in December 1938. Hahn claimed that his chemistry had been solely responsible for the discovery, although he had been unable to explain the results. It was politically impossible for the exiled Mietner to publish jointly with Hahn in 1939. Han and Strassmann had sent the manuscript of their paper to Naturwiss and Schefton in December 1938, reporting they had detected the element barium, after bombarding uranium with neutrons, simultaneously, they had communicated their results to Mietner in a letter. Mietner, and her nephew Otto Frisch, correctly interpreted their results as being nuclear fission, and published their paper in Nature. Frisch confirmed this experimentally on 13 January 1939. Mietner recognized the possibility for a chain reaction of enormous explosive potential. This report had an electrifying effect on the scientific community. Because this could be used as a weapon, and since the knowledge was in German hands, Leo Szilard, Edward Teller, and Eugene Weiner jumped into action, persuading Albert Einstein, a celebrity, to write President Franklin D. Roosevelt a letter of caution. This led eventually to the establishment several years later of the Manhattan Project. Mietner refused an offer to work on the project at Los Alamos, declaring I will have nothing to do with the bomb. Mietner said that Hiroshima had come as a surprise to her, and that she was sorry that the bomb had to be invented. 
in Sweden, Mietner was first active at Siegmund's Nobel Institute for Physics, and at the Swedish Defence Research Establishment, FOA, and the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, where she had a laboratory, and participated in research on R1, Sweden's first nuclear reactor. In 1947, a personal position was created for Mietner at the University College of Stockholm with the salary of a professor, and funding from the Council for Atomic Research. Awards and Honours Mietner with actress Catherine Cornell and physicist Arthur Compton on 6 June 1946, when Mietner and Cornell were receiving awards from the National Conference of Christians and Jews. On 15 November 1945 the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences announced that Han had been awarded the 1944 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the discovery of nuclear fission. Some historians who have documented the history of the discovery of nuclear fission believe Mietner should have been awarded the Nobel Prize with Han. On a visit to the USA in 1946, she received the honor of Woman of the Year by the National Press Club, and had dinner with President Harry Truman, and others at the National Women's Press Club. She lectured at Princeton, Harvard and other U.S. universities, and was awarded a number of honorary doctorates. Lars Mietner refused to move back to Germany, and enjoyed retirement and research in Stockholm until her late 80s. She received the Maximum Planck Medal of the German Physics Society in 1949. Mietner was nominated to receive the prize three times. An even rarer honor was given to her in 1997 when Element 109 was named Mietner Riem in her honor. Named after Mietner with a Han Mietner Institute in Berlin, craters on the Moon and on Venus, and a main belt asteroid. Mietner was elected a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in 1945, and had her status changed to that of a Swedish member in 1951. In 1966 Han, Fritz Strassmann and Mietner were jointly awarded the Enrico Fermi Award. Lars Mietner received 21 scientific honors and awards for her work, including five honorary doctorates and membership of many academies. In 1947 she received the award of the City of Vienna for Science. She was the first female member of the scientific class of the Austrian Academy of Sciences. In 2008, the NBC Defense School of the Austrian Armed Forces established the Lys Mietner Award. In 1960, Mietner was awarded the Wilhelm Exner Medal, and in 1967, the Austrian Decoration for Science and Art. Public facilities such as schools and streets were named after her in many cities. Later years after the war, Mietner, while acknowledging her own moral failing, and staying in Germany from 1933 to 1938, was bitterly critical of Hahn and other German scientists who had collaborated with the Nazis, and done nothing to protest against the crimes of Hitler's regime. Referring to the leading German scientist Werner Heisenberg, she said, Heisenberg and many millions with him should be forced to see these camps and the martyred people. She wrote to Hahn. Lars Mietner's grave in Brainley. You all worked for Nazi Germany. And you tried to offer only a passive resistance. Certainly, to buy off your conscience you helped here and there a persecuted person, but millions of innocent human beings were allowed to be murdered without any kind of protest being uttered. It is said that, first you betrayed your friends, then your children, in that you let them stake their lives on a criminal war, and finally that you betrayed Germany itself, because when the war was already quite hopeless. You did not once arm yourselves against the senseless destruction of Germany. Dash. Han wrote in his memoirs that he and Mietner had been lifelong friends. Mietner became a Swedish citizen in 1949. She retired in 1960 and moved to the UK where most of her relatives were, although she continued working part time and giving lectures. A strenuous trip to the United States in 1964 led to Mietner having a heart attack, from which she spent several months recovering. Her physical and mental condition weakened by atherosclerosis, she was unable to travel to the U.S. to receive the Enrico Fermi Prize and relatives had to present it to her. After breaking her hip in a fall and suffering several small strokes in 1967, Mietner made a partial recovery, but eventually was weakened to the point where she moved into a Cambridge nursing home. She died on 27 October 1968 at the age of 89. Mietner was not informed of the deaths of Otto Hahn and his wife Edith, as her family believed it would be too much for someone as frail as her. As was her wish, she was buried in the village of Bramley in Hampshire, at St. James Parish Church, close to her younger brother Walter, who had died in 1964. 
Her nephew Otto Frisch composed the inscription on her headstone. It reads Lise Meitner, a physicist who never lost her humanity. Lise Meitner, a physicist who never lost her humanity. Lise Meitner, a physicist.